I've been asked on several occasions over the years to define empathy and sympathy. I've been studying human behavior for the past 25 years or so for one modality or the other. And I don't really have a definitive answer. I guess that's what it means to you, uh, the value laid on language, uh, empathy. Um, what I would say is that, interestingly, uh, I was on a, in a classroom one day myself doing some learning and one of the influential teachers in my career in coaching and therapy, uh, Jeff Zai, who founded the Ericsson Institute in Arizona. Anyway, the, the topic came up, a woman had mentioned that she finds it hard sometimes in client sessions to, like she feels what the client feels, she feels sympathic in her words, empathic. And it's quite interesting really, because there is, I guess, a fine line in one sense, and you could use the dictionary uh, language definition of what it is, or you could sort of read between the lines that the people got to say. But I spoke to Jeff about that, and, and, and Jeff certainly has been very influential in my career. And what I took out of it was that the sympathy is actually feeling what the person feels going into their world in one sense and empathy is keeping it a neutral position where you can appreciate what they feel to a point so it's almost like a dissociation from the feeling and i really think that that leaves you well placed certainly in therapy because you don't really want to go into the person's world because you're going to burn out it's a bit like trying to save someone in, in, in who's drowning and if you can't swim and you go in there then you're both in danger. So the logical thing to do is to sort of give them a, a, a vest or whatever you can find to help them um, survive. And then if someone else jumps in after you and you both can't swim, then obviously you're all in trouble. So and I think it became apparent to me in my own journey, my own research and how important empathy is. And I remember reading a research paper one time. It was around, you may have read it before yourselves, it was a research paper about how, I think it was Massachusetts, how they did an evaluation where they, they put some doctors through training, empathic skills training. And they found that evaluatively, the patients of the doctors who did the training had received better evaluations and um, across a number of criteria than the ones who didn't. So that sort of proves that it may not be a trait like what's once thought to a certain extent. Now with neuroscience, we know mirror neuron theory and so on and so forth. And we know that obviously there's, I suppose a bit of nature and nurture. We, we probably have a default state, but the expression of that state is influenced by the environment we're in. So in your own journey in life, I suppose if you're sort of taught to, to hate and, and, and judge and, and do all the things that are opposite to being empathic, then it's very likely it's gonna have an effect on you. Equally the opposite is true, but how much we're influenced by an environment is, is a spectrum, uh, one would think, to a certain point. And one time I was working in, in, in a care home, and quite interestingly, um, I remember one time I was doing education, and my remit was to deliver education to the young people, but also deliver some training around CBT and other interventions of staff. And it was a new member of staff, and she said to me, um, in her words, she goes, you come with this big reputation uh, for, for I, I don't know where she got that from, by the way, um, but I had, you know, delusions of grandeur. You could say I wanted to make sure that everyone had a great opportunity to learn uh, at the highest level. I really wanted to learn GCC as uh, GCC uh, A level and, and sort of go away from the traditional ASDAN. Uh, I thought that they could do it. And and she said to me, she goes, "Well, you, you seem like you don't care." And I, I thought it was really interesting, really, because at that point, at the moment, and, and obviously I did care. I wouldn't be doing the job I was doing if I didn't care. Um, I cared a lot but cared enough to make sure I had that separation between, okay, and I sort of asked her a few questions and probed a little bit, and I found that, okay, and, and she psychoanalyzed me, and I thought, well, it's my turn now, and I said that I think maybe you're in the job to try and heal yourself, so I become all psychoanalytical, not that I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I respect psychoanalysis and so on and so forth, And but the point being is that I think that she was going to the world of sympathy, and I think that sometimes actually certain people you work with can bring that out of you, and I mentioned that to the woman on the course with, with Jeff. I said to her, well, maybe you're going into reverse hypnosis where you're associating with the person you're working with. Let's say, for example, you're working with, say, a teenager. You've got a teenager 
then you might feel a lot more than what you would feel if you don't. There's a chance you sort of go into that little reverse hypnosis mode. Or for example, if you're working with someone with a certain condition, you know someone in your family has got that, or you've got that, there may be a stronger emotional uh, tug than if it's not there. That's just one hypothesis, that's not for sure. Um, I think personally that, yeah, I, I guess it is a trait to a point, um, but equally I think it can, a skill that can be trained has been proved in neuroscience. But what I would say, the, the belief in itself is going to have an impact on people because obviously if you believe it's a trait, you're not going to do a great deal to improve your empathic skills, which is shown to be invaluable in coaching. And I suppose for me, certainly in the care industry, I thought it would be patronizing to, because the, the order of the day when I was involved in the industry was restorative justice and all that sort of stuff and connection. And, and I thought it would be patronizing to say to a young person, I know what you feel. Because you don't know what they felt. Well, certainly I didn't know what they felt. Like some of the young people, you read their case files, well, goodness me, what they'd been through in such a short time, moved from house and, and, and you know, abuse and all the things that they'd suffered, and I'm saying just confined to them. How can you know how they felt? The reality is, and how will they feel if you say to them, I know how you felt? So, really, the key for me is to think, okay, well, you know, I, I might not know how you felt, although I can imagine it's tough and, and life isn't fair and so on and so forth. And we can still be empathic without going into their shoes and keep a neutral point of view to help them go from A to B uh, to move forward. I think what's really interesting, really, uh, is some other things that sort of um, you see sometimes because obviously connection is really important in empathy and things like body language and, and that sort of shines through and I think things like and there's not exhaustive like eye contact as well and I know you've probably seen these seminars where they talk about eye contact and make the person feel that the only person in the world and blah 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 that hullabaloo but there is some truth in that because if you think about it when a mother holds the baby like this the, the baby um, the infant the baby um, eye contact of the mum is about, say, 12 centimetres. Okay, so there's a gaze. The baby gaze at mum and, and vice versa. And you'll see the baby look up um, on several occasions just from a safety uh, behaviour point of view. So there could be that correlation, really. And I'm not saying to eyeball people and, and look them straight in the eye and make it look superficial like you see in some of these motivational um, speaking things and, and not saying that there's anything wrong with that obviously there's, there's a skill in itself but you can see for it it's not congruent and culture influences that too in some cultures it's sort of uh, possibly maybe maybe less um maybe a little bit more rude to look in someone's eye i don't know different cultures different things i know in my background uh, i i i have an italian background and in, in italy uh, the proximity is a lot closer um and and certainly when i work in italy there's a much closer proximity and you'll see some of the videos that I've been done some of the work I've done out there, the one-to-one. -one. People come a lot closer in proximity, so it's, and that's a generalization, but the generalization sort of sometimes cultural indications. Uh, and people might be shy to look at you in the eye. There's a number of reasons why they might not look in the eye. Um, or, you know, I know one time I was living a presentation uh, for uh, a big speech. It was for a speaking organization, and, and I was wearing uh, sun, well, sunglasses, so to speak. but. The point was that the room was very bright and sometimes I have eye, a bit of eye sensitivity. I'm not looking for empathy, by the way. It sort of comes and goes. At times it's worse than others, but I thought the light was so bright, I knew my eye would start streaming a little bit uh, in that environment. So I, I put the, you know, on a beautiful day like day sometimes and the sun's out, uh, it can happen as well. So I'm just using those examples because obviously in the, the day um, when we talk about eye contact, it's important, but equally in saying that there is that to take in consideration. So I think for me, it's just developing uh, skills. Yeah, certainly you can sort of imagine being in someone else's shoes. That can be quite useful, seeing the wall from their position. But can you really ever do that? That's a hypothesis. The hypothesis is that if you do that, you can sort of increase your cortical pathways. Uh, that's for sure, as much as one can do in that specific situation. But that's another story from the day. We can look at ways uh, to grow your empathy. But I think that connecting and understanding is, is certainly a good place. And things like I contact and, and, and being present being in the moment really I think being in the moment is probably the biggest uh, important thing but there are also other cues that will give away um, like body language and, and and so on and so forth through evolution of the nervous system and brain that the person will probably read into and I think you know congruent to self and I think you know certainly in certain environments people can see um, if you're genuine or not and I'm not saying that's um, part of today's tutorial but 
the pine in, in, in summarising. So there is that sort of fine line, I think, anyway, and I think that empathy certainly in the world today, you probably can never have too much of it, really. I think we're sort of conditioned in the world sometimes to almost uh, dehumanise um, people, that's for sure, and, and that can't be a good thing for anybody or the growth of the human race. Um, and certainly one is not suggesting to be sympathetic, that would probably be emotionally draining. I don't think I'd want anyone to be sympathetic for me in one sense, so I don't think anyone would want someone to be sympathetic for them in the sense that it can be a little bit overwhelming to a certain degree, so having that sort of em empathic um, where you sort of appreciate what the person's going through it's, it's tough but we're sort of confident we can help the person move on as much as they possibly can do that's today thanks for watching live with passion boom